Uh, hello everyone. Uh, oh. Oh, hello everyone. Uh, welcome to my new video. So the topic for this video is about the Insta 361 R, but it's not a review or it's not a, a summary of the product. Uh, but I will focus on a single feature of the 1R camera, it's a night mode. And uh, many cameras nowadays have night mode, but I think the night mode on the Insta 361 R is uh, a little bit different compared with its predecessors. And night mode will help you to achieve relatively high quality image directly in the camera and from the app. And it's a very interesting feature in the camera. And uh, I will show you the, everything you know you need to know about the night mode from the shooting to post processing and everything I will show you later on will based on a real world example which I will tell you step by step in my live demo section and uh, next I will give you some comments and uh, experience tips and tricks on night mode to help you to master the night mode better than anyone else Last but not least, I will tell you a little bit more about some knowledge in the quantum optics or we could say quantum physics because the image sensor, the photography, technically speaking, is a job of the quantum physics. And with the knowledge on background, I think you will definitely have a better understand on the compact and slim camera, camera like the Insta 361 r And that will definitely help you learn much better on the computational photography which is also my main interest on my youtube channel so let's get started hello everyone this is Yu Guo speaking today our topic is a study on the night mode from the insta 361 r it's uh, specifically for this night mode in the photo photo shooting of the new released one r camera and i'm i'm very excited with this feature and I have buy this camera and try it on my own and I have some experience I want to share with you. So today our topic will focus on the night mode of this camera. Uh, the topic for today will divide into three sections. The first one is I want to give you an overview of the night mode of the camera. The second one is I want to tell you how to use the night mode and how to the tips and tricks about night mode. The third one, the last one is some conclusions and some summaries. Of, of course, I will give some features, requests, suggestions on designer of the Insta 361 R. I want to make it better in the future and I think it can be better, definitely. Okay, so let's go to the part one overview. Uh, what fascinated me most from the Insta 361 R is it's not the modular design, it's not the, the interchangeable lens, but you know I have taken lots of 360 photos on Facebook in my life. So uh, the first time I saw that there was night mode on the camera, I'm very interested in that feature. So I want to explore the, the, the skills, the capabilities behind this feature. And I want to try what can I get from this feature. So night mode is in fact that point that will push me to buy this camera in the market. The reason why, yes, I have uh, tell you a little bit more about myself because my goal is to pursue the high quality photo from one shot 36 camera as you have, you can see my uh, IVR PV talk on the 2019. Uh, I love to take 360 photos and I always I'm dreaming about take a high quality photo straight out from this one shot 360 camera. This camera I have bought uh, lots of gears, for example the Madventure, the Z1, the Kukam and today the 360 1R. To presume the high quality and I would rather put the 1R like this because normally I will use the, the camera her, uh, vertically not horizontally. The 1R was designed to be an uh, action camera. Uh, but in my mind, it can also be used as a very good 360 one-shot camera. Uh, and uh, I always want the highest imaging quality, 
Of course, the best moment deserves the best quality. And at the same time, we know we are not living uh, with photography. We have our own lives, and time cost doesn't matter. Uh, less time with higher quality. That is the ultimate goal for most of the users of for the consumer level 360 cameras. And we love uh, one shot 360 cameras because they are compact and they are slim. They are pocketable. We can put in our hand, put in our pocket, and throw in our bag. And once we want to take a picture, we want to take videos, so we can take out instantly and capture all the stuff around the event. So time cost, less time, higher quality, and at the same time, keep the camera body compact and slim. Of course, uh, I want a camera that is uh, the workflow that is easy and short enough. We can get the high quality, even the professional imaging quality, just with only one click. Uh, but you know, it's not possible at this moment, but I, I hope we can achieve that goal in the future. So a workflow, I mean that from the shoot, shooting, the synthesizing, and the uh, photo stitching and the post-processing. Of course, the shoot will be fast, should be fast, lightning fast, the synthesize. I want the synthesize to be instantly, but the hardware, the computational resources, of course, it's not not good enough at this moment. And the stitching want to be perfect, but for dual fisheye lenses, the stitching is it's getting better and better, but it's still quite far from perfect stitch. And of course, uh, for the amazing quality one shot 360 photos, we still need some post productions. But for one hour, we will see something different in the post production. Yes, and uh, to summary, that my goal, my choice for the one shot 360 cameras is that camera, one shot 360 camera captures more photons with only one click. So for the camera, it's very small. We have to capture the multi-frame. Uh, we even need the burst mode to capture multi-frames uh, in, in a few seconds. So every second is a capture of photons. So the photons, is de uh, the capture depends on the, the sensor size, the burst rate, and the algorithms. So the uh, we will talk about some uh, quantum physics later on, but my conclusion is that I want the, the one shot 360 camera that captures more photons with only one click. For example, the Z1 has one inch sensor, but without burst. The KuCam has the 1.17 inch, but with the DNG8. And now the Insta360 has the, the burst 9, a burst 9 mode. So they have different uh, technical routines, but the results are all pretty good. So finally, I choose the twin edition because uh, on the market there is it's, it's a pity that there's no one R three sixty version. I I all 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 I will buy the action version and buy a lens module, or I have to choose the twin edition. But that's okay. It's not an expensive camera, and uh, finally I put this twin edition in my in my pocket, and I pay for that. So today, uh, my topic will start on the basis of the Android app and firmware uh, of 1.0.13 and uh, Insta360 Studio 2019. So these are the uh, requirements if you want to duplicate my result in my talk. You can use the, the app, the firmware, the 13th firmware just released yesterday and the studio 2019. If you want to duplicate my result, you can use this. Uh, you can meet the requirement, okay? So the, the second part is the most important part is if we focus on the night mode. That's uh, just a part of the, the photo feature, but this mode is really important for me. I think it, it's also really important for you. Uh, night mode is very common on the uh, camera design. For example, for our mirrorless camera, for our entry-level DSR, we have the this round circle on the top of our camera body, and we can see there are many modes. One of them usually will be the a night mode. In this in this mode, is, it, which means the night portrait, and some cameras have the the scenes selections. Uh, one of them will be the night mode. 
and for the DSLR or the uh, mirrorless camera because they are designed to have a flashlight on the top. So they can control the light more flexible than the one shot 360 camera. So for the night mode in the DSLR or the mirrorless camera, it usually means the uh, the flash synchronization, such as the front curtain sync or the rear curtain sync. That is not exactly what we are going to talk in the night mode, because the mirrorless camera or the DSR have relatively a large sensor. They can capture a quite a good amount of photons with just one shot. So, and then we have they have in-camera flash. So for the the light, you can control. It can help you take nine shot easier than the one shot 360. So that is not the case with the uh, the night mode we are going to talk today. But th this shot you can see that this shot was taken with iPhone 11 with the the iPhone night mode. That exactly we are going to talk in our slides. This shots I, I go to this apple.com I found in their night mode competition. I, I download these photos and put them in my slides. This shot was taken with the a 28 millimeter prime lens on iPhone 11. And you can see the image result is uh, pretty awesome without zooming in, you know. Uh, that's pretty awesome. If we can take such quality one shot 360 photo, I think that will be please will be a uh, will make our life happier for the most of the customers, okay? And that is exactly what we are going to talk in our uh, section. And next up, uh, for other the 360 cameras, they are also going are uh, going to equip with uh, night mode or something else. For example, the Seat SC2 that already on the market in, in Japan, and it will be available in China in a few in a few weeks. And the Ricos SC2, they have a night view mode built directly inside the camera, which help help you help you uh, capture the better photo in uh, low light and we still maintain a good dynamic range. This is an example of the SC2 photo in night view. Of course, for some other cameras, uh, this one I, I shot in a, in a local a local bar. I was drinking the, the, the beverage and this one was shot with the Kukam 8K with the DNG8 mode. It's a, a burst of eight DNG shots in a sequence uh, could help also help you capture uh, very good photos in low light. That's kind of night mode, but not exactly the same with the one R night mode. And these are some examples that night mode is very common in nowadays camera designs. But the unique of one R one R night photo is that uh, compared with the iPhone 11, is not. The mesh size, you know, the iPhone 11 have the custom designed chip, custom designed optic, and they have their secret algorithm. They work together. It's it's really a mesh size, judging from the few shooters' presentation. So the One R has a, a relatively another kind of camera compared with iPhone, and the size behind the One R is not that mad, but also very crazy in computational photography. And and uh, after my uh, shooting with the night mode, I feel like it feel like that it's kind of similar approach with the Canon Kukam DNG8 and the Ricoh Sita night view, but they have a little bit of difference, and the one R have already achieved very good result. Here is the example of of my, of me shooting uh, at low light. You can see the moonlight in the sky. I was shooting handheld in my. Uh, in my house, and you can see this is a result of the one hour uh, night mode. And how to use the night mode before we uh, analyzing how the night mode work? I want to tell you how to use the night mode, because uh, if you want to learn the, some how to skills, and that is the part for you. How to use night mode? Uh, in fact, if you want to master the skill of uh, using the night mode, we have to learn three mm -hmm. part. The first part is how to shoot individually uh, on your camera without any, without your cell phone, without app, without studio. How to shoot in, in your camera because the camera has touch screen. We have every options directly. We can go to the menu in the camera. 
The second one is how to control your camera to capture the night model in your app because Insta 360 has a very good design in their app. The app is always the, the selling point of their product and how to use the And last but not least, uh, the Insta 360 Studio 2019 is also capable of doing the post-processing of the night mode sequence. And for the highest imaging quality, uh, you cannot get rid of the studio. So for the camera, for the app, for the studio, if you want to master the night mode, you have to learn all the skills. First one is how to shoot in your camera. The workflow is very easy. Just open your camera, choose night mode, and choose some settings, and just click the shutter button. One thing I have to mention that I insist you choose the JPEG Plus Pro option to achieve the highest imaging quality. And the app workflow is also very easy. Uh, to open the app, connect the camera with Wi-Fi. In the photo mode, you have the option of night mode, and the rest is all the same as the you op op operating in the camera. For the studio, uh, it's that just a drag and drop the sequence of your birth shots and export directly in the uh, the post processing with a, a higher imaging quality raw file, and you can post process later on in your uh, uh, in your computer with Adobe Adobe systems. Okay, so that is the brief workflow. I will show you step by step in later on in the live demo section. And press the uh, mode button, long press to open the camera. See, uh, after beep, the camera will open up, power off. Uh, after that, uh, I will show you how to go to the night mode. Click uh, on the left down, click on the photo mode, and scroll it back and forth until you get uh, the night mode. Here are some very important settings. If, for example, if you uh, click on the right bottom, this you can choose timer from 3 seconds to 15 seconds. If you handheld, 3 seconds is enough. But if you shoot the other side, you can choose 5 or a longer time. And scroll from right to left, you can see some detailed settings. For example, the white balance, I always leave to the auto because I trust the algorithm. Next is to choose the, the format. Uh, I suggest that we choose the, the RAW plus JPEG because that will help us get the highest imaging quality. But if you were shooting stable at the desktop, at the scenery uh, where uh, nothing is moving around, in that case, you can choose the, the JPEG only mode. Okay, and once you select the JPEG plus RAW in my SD card, I have inserted a 64 gigabyte. Uh, we have only 218 shots left. Night shot takes uh, a lot of capacity. And to shoot with the night photo mode, just uh, click on the shutter button, okay? And you can see the countdown timer in, in the front screen. And after that, you can see uh, it indicates uh, capturing and saving. Capturing, which means uh, the camera is doing the a burst of nine shots uh, of DNG and the JPEG. And after that, saving will cost you more time because that's a huge amount of data to move from the internal storage to your SD card. So that's the reason why the night shot mode uh, will take quite a lot of time. In this live demo section, I'm going to show you how to use night photo uh, in your app. Uh, it's also very easy. And uh, first, you have to open up your camera. Now my camera is already powered on. And you, uh, yeah, you should have f uh, find this uh, hotspot, Wi-Fi hotspot in your Wi-Fi list. On my Android phone, I connect to the Wi-Fi hotspot and uh, open the app. And now we automatically connect with the camera. Okay, so now you have seen I have already taken several shots in my uh, folders. If you want to take night photo, it's also very easy uh, in the app. Uh, just uh, go to the photo options and choose night shot. In the file format, choose RAW plus ISP, which is JPEG plus RAW. And click on this shutter button and it will help if you take the night photo automatically for you. It's the same as the, the camera body. If you want to synthesize in the night photo app, you can click on this icon and the, the app will synthesize in the night shot at the backstage automatically for you. So uh, after the 
how to use section. Some somebody want to know how does it work? How does the nine mode work? I want to analyze uh, from a consumer's perspective, analyzing how does the night mode work in your camera in your app. And this I make uh, here. I give you a feature summary table is uh, based on my own experience about the uh, night mode. And you can I will not read the table for you, but I'm, I can guarantee that you will know everything in this table and after the. The next section, okay. So if you uh, if you are in the night mode and choose the ISP, which is JPEG only, the one hour camera will capture the nine shot in burst. So it's n it's the a nine nine photo, but the composition is the eight plus one with eight eight photo with the with automatically exposure and uh, without any exposure value. EV zero, and the last one was uh, at shoot at EV minus four, and the nine the nine shot was all captured in JPEG format. It's very fast, and to, to synthesizing these nine photos in your app is also very fast because it's eight bit JPEG file, and uh, there will not be any motion composition. So the result after the synthesizing, it will have Ghosting. If you are uh, moving, or you're moving while shooting, or if you are you have handshake, you know selfie stick, the result will have ghost. So the the, the result will be that uh, you have uh, good quality, not excellent, but just a good quality. Especially when you are shooting at very stable environment, you can get a good quality. It's like uh, a denoised JPEG. It uh, has higher image quality than a single JPEG, but less less higher quality than the DNG shot. Okay, and if you choose the JPEG plus RAW, that is the advanced mode in the night mode, it will capture also will capture nine shot, but the nine the nine shot is totally different compared with the the JPEG mode. It will capture the eight uh, eight plus one burst DNG plus JPEG. It looks like this. The yellow one will is the the DNG shoot as EV zero, and the the blue one was the DN the JPEG, uh, accompany with the DNG at EV zero. And the last, the last shot will be at uh, the DNG minus four and the JPEG minus four. We have a huge amount of data. Usually it will be around uh, three hundred and sixty megabytes. And so the synthesizing based on these files will be much slower than the JPEG only process. And one thing I have to mention is that the TNG file straight out from the from the webinar camera is 14 bit depth. And so for the TNG file, the TNG will merge and fusion without any ghosting. But the other one, if you uh, Stack them on the studio. You can see that it's just the same as the, the JPEG stacking. It will result be the uh, ghosting. That and the DNG, the DNG stacking uh, will come with the ghosting algorithm, the motion composition. So the synthesizing process will be slower, uh, but the quality of the the DNG stacking, the DNG burst is much higher than a single DNG and even. So much higher than the, the the JPEG stacking in the previous section. So I so that's the reason why I insist that you should choose the JPEG plus RAW when you were shooting in the night mode. Okay. And after that, in your app or in the studio, uh, you will feel like that the final result is even better. It's more appe uh, appealing compared with the RAW DNG file because when you're exporting the the files, the night mode, straight out from the app or straight out from the studio, something will happen. So, for example, in the one hour app, with like tone mapping, design, denoise, sharpening, blah blah blah, some other uh, post processing tricks, that will make your photo looks looks better. And the final result you share with your friend is also a eight bit JPEG file. But the process is, it's all done internally in the app. So that is a very uh, user-friendly workflow uh, compared with the 
with other cameras. And, th and that's why you can get the best imaging quality through this mode, the night mode plus raw DNG. And what about some real world workflow? So this, we are going to uh, the live demo section. Uh, I'm going to show you a real world example, a case study that I was shooting uh, in my real world. And I will show you everything from the shooting to the post processing and how to, yeah, this is some of the, my real world example, a handheld shooting, and this one, and this one. And uh, the live demo, we are focused on th this one, how to choose, how to shoot this camera straight out from your app. You can see that I was holding the uh, one hour app in my cell phone in the window. So let's go to the live demo section. As you can see, I'm going to take a, a night photo with 1R night mode uh, at around 6 p.m. Here I put my 1R here. You can see I just opened the camera and it's uh, straight out from the window. And uh, I'm going to take a night photo with my 1R app and show you the workflow on the Android platform. But the same with the iPhone, iOS. Let's go to the take the control of the camera and now it's the live preview. You can see you can change your uh, point of view. You can see what you, what you feel in the in the up in the air and the snowy day. Then go to the photo mode, go to the options, go to the night shot, uh, take a five second countdown. Uh, I, would, I would like to leave the uh, white balance at auto because I trust the algorithm for the picture you can choose the insta picture or raw plus jpeg for the highest imaging quality uh, I recommend you choose the raw plus jpeg okay and now you take a countdown and now the camera is capturing the scenery it would take around 30 seconds for the capture and the saving and after that you can see in the gallery on the left left down corner of the screen now let's wait for the capture to finish it usually takes around 30 seconds so you need to be patient but uh, once the capture has done, you can move your camera. And uh, if you shoot handheld, you can hear the sound. But now we are leaving the camera in the air, so we cannot hear the sound. In the, now in the gallery, we just uh, go to the menu. And the app will synthesize the night photo online. And we, will, we are going to see the result uh, in a few seconds. It will take around 40 seconds because the uh, app will copy the data from the camera wirelessly and do the stacking and the HDR blending and also the tone mapping, sharpening something else and the output a very good photo straight out from the app. And in this example, I'm going to show you a, a handheld example. You can see I'm holding the camera in my hand. You can see in the live preview. Okay, so I'm holding the camera in my life with a selfie stick. And uh, let's take a photo again. Okay, so after that, the synthesize completed. And we click on confirm, we can see the result. You can see although it's handheld at night with shooting handheld, the result is pretty awesome. And you can see myself, I'm holding a, a cell phone in my hand, and on the other hand, I was holding a selfie stick. Okay. And um, yeah, that's that's pretty awesome. And and here I can show you uh, the the real scenes. Of the outside, okay. See that it's look like this, but it looks pretty awesome in, in the panorama, okay.
So that, that is through the workflow of uh, handheld. It's the same workflow, but I'm going to show you that the night mode also have the ghosting and some other a very, very interesting algorithm to make this picture well. The second one is uh, how to view and share in the app in the live, in the live demo section. Because we have just taken a very good shot uh, in, at my window, and I want to view the night mode and share with my friends directly in the app. So this time, uh, this live demo section we will focus on the view and the share in the app. Synthesizing complete. Now you can see the the result is uh, is pretty amazing, right? It's at the dawn of the of the whole day and uh, put in the air. Although we can see myself in the picture, but that's okay. I'm going to show you the whole workflow I use from the shooting to the end. And after that, you can share with your friends, add the favorite. They can also uh, click on the chromatic vibration and export to your gallery and then share to your friends with these buttons. Okay. And also, you can apply some filters online. This one. Right, to make it look more cinematic, and that is the workflow on the Android app. Okay, I think we have already learned everything about night mode in your app in your camera, but the Insta 360 Studio 2019 is also a very important part in night mode. So in this live demo section, I'm gonna show you how to view and share in Studio, and how to export directly, uh, export a panorama DNG in the Insta360 Studio 2019. Okay, now we are in the live demo section uh, showing you how night mode work on the uh, Insta360 Studio 2019. As you can see, I'm on the Insta360 Studio 2019 and I'm on the, the latest uh, version 3.4.4. Okay. Uh, on the right on the right side of the screen you can see that uh, uh, in the folder is uh, some of the sample photos of the night mode uh, you can see uh, I have, I'm shooting with DNG plus JPEG mode and everything every DNG will com come in with an ISP photo and every uh, judging from the modification time we can see Every set of the nine mode shot consists of eighteen consists of eighteen eighteen photos at uh, around uh, three hundred and sixty four megabyte. So that's quite a lot of data in your SD card. Okay, and uh, the way you should uh, do night photo is to drag and drop the set of the photo directly to your Insta360 Studio and it will be recognized as a night view. You can see the file name, the night view. On the left is the DNG version, on the right is the JPEG version. So you can see both the JPEG stacking without ghosting and the DNG stack with ghosting. The loading speed is really slow because the studio is doing the computational work at the backstage. Once it finished, you can see the result, and it's what you see is what you get. So it's very interesting. You can see the results straight out from the studio, and uh, but uh, you cannot change anything on the right on the right side of the studio. You cannot change anything. You can you cannot uh, change horizontal. You cannot do the calibration. Okay, so I want to show you all the sample photos. Uh, for a single night photo, drag and drop the 18 files directly to the studio. But if you want to be uh, simple, you can drag and drop to the, the folder directly to the Insta360 Studio. And the Insta360 Studio will automatically uh, figure out the night view photo and the normal photo, the normal ISP photo. And every night photo comes with a DNG version on the left and the JPEG version on the right. And on the JPEG version, there is no deghosting algorithm. And on the DNG version, there is deghosting, and uh, the image quality is 
uh, actually higher than the, the one on the right. And if you are not satisfied, if you want to compare by yourself, you can also uh, choose one of the ISP and drag and drop to the menu and you can see it before and after by yourself, okay? So we have to wait for quite a long time because the rendering speed is, is really, really slow. And it's stacking of 9 DNG shots, which stack the 8 shot first and blend the highlight with the 9th photo. And for the result, you can see there is the, the, the dynamic range is very good. The highlight is not blown out. And the shadows, there's no noise, but you cannot zoom in, zoom out. It's not ready on the studio yet. And this one was shot in low light. This is a DNG version, and uh, this is a JPEG version. You can see the DNG version is clearly much better than this is DNG. This is JPEG. Okay, so it's a huge difference. And uh, if you look close, look closely, this one there is ghosting because I was holding the camera in my hand. It's shaky, and you can see some artifacts and. Uh, and blending and this one would shoot uh, outside my house and you can see the snow in the winter night the atmosphere is very good the stitching is uh, it's quite good but uh, when I export the file from the studio the stitching is not that good compared with the preview okay and th this one was the shot that I have show you in the, in the app live demo section and this is DNG you can see the image quality is much higher and this is JPEG okay DNG and JPEG this one is DNG it's handheld you can see I was holding the camera in my hand and this is JPEG it's clearly you can see the the row plus JPEG has much higher image quality compared with the JPEG okay so and this is a single single JPEG shot. This is the DNG stack. The DNG stack has less noise, but the DNG shot has some much higher quality overall, you can see. Okay. Single DNG. Especially be careful with the, the shadow areas, the black. And to, to use the night mode in the studio is very easy. Just drag and drop. Uh, when you export, you can choose the one on the left because they are DNG shots and click on the export you can target resolution is original is 6k 6k plus you can export to your desktop or you can export to anywhere you want click on OK and it will render uh, you can see the file name the file name is very long the night view merge merge dot DNG so that is a high quality DNG. It's a combination of eight eight DNG shots, and the rendering speed depends on your computer. For my computer, is around uh, thirty seconds per image. Okay, so I, I have to wait wait for the complete. Well, once you are exporting, you can still uh, see the other photos and do some edit, but. Here we cannot do anything because this, the controllability, the, the slider is just limited. We cannot do anything but to output automatically. Okay. You can see the the export is. We only have one photo export, so the export is. It's quite slow. I think it's even slower than the, the app because it's exporting a true DNG format. And on the app, it uh, exports a JPEG. But uh, we can see the DNG file in Adobe Bridge. Okay, Here is the... Uh, here we'll create an individual folder for every one of the shots. And it will create the DNG and the correspondent JPEG file. Okay, so we can uh, live preview in our in our bridge Adobe Bridge, and you can see the DNG version is 16-bit color depth. Okay, 16-bit, 6K. 
and it is uh, already stitched. It is an equirectangular DNG. But you can see the sharpness, the resolution. I think it's, it, it's dropped a little bit compared with uh, the preview in the studio. I don't know the, why. And on this shot, we can do the post processing as, as we want. Okay, Post process as long as we want. And export as uh, a two one uh, equirectangular panorama to your computer and share with your friends exactly the way uh, you share with your friends okay so that is a workflow uh, of the studio how to take the advantage of night photo combined with the insta 360 2019 studio okay so now the export has uh, been finished uh, we can see it will create an individual folder for every night view and you can see the the JPEG version and uh, night mode DNG raw version so this one is just like the one you will get in the app it's uh, it's generated from the high quality DNG file but with some tone mapping and uh, sharpening something like that okay the other one is is the same and uh, as you can see in in this in this shot uh, i was holding the camera in my hand at night so handheld is okay to shoot right now. for the workflow of the Insta360 Studio. Okay, so after all this live demo section, I think you have already learned everything I know about the night photo mode. Uh, now it's time to make a summary on the night mode. If, if you have to make a review to make you understand the night mode better uh, with my table. Okay, so now you can, you can see uh, the feature summary about night mode. You can finally you will know everything in the table. And uh, you can see the format, the, the bit depth, the original, the DNG is the 14 bit depth, the synthesizing is also the 14 bit depth. The auto exposure with motion detection because the, the camera will detect your motion and select the optimized shutter speed to avoid the motion blur. And the limitation I have tested in my real world situation is uh, the half second and ISO 1600 because I have put my camera in a black box and in that case the night mode the camera will choose this setting and the ghosting only happens on the DNG mode okay so in the second in the second section of this presentation uh, I think you have already know everything about night mode but I think it's, it's, mo it's really more important to make a conclusion about the night mode and even uh, to make some features request because this mode could definitely be better in the future and uh, I am still not very satisfied with this mode. So in this section, I want to give you some conclusion of my own comments and the feature request on the night mode. And what I didn't tell you in the in the last chapter is that I want to show you something that you will feel uh, surprisingly interesting the capacity right uh, for the JPEG the DNG 9 uh, the JPEG uh, burst 9 we have uh, 50 megabytes for these shots and for the raw plus JPEG uh, the capacity will be huge it's around 360 megabytes so that we only have 210 night shot on a 64 gigabyte memory card. So you better choose a, a bigger card. And the benchmark, the time, time cost is very important. As we can see, the capture and the saving will take around uh, 25 seconds in, the, in, my, in my camera. And if you wirelessly stack in the JPEG only on uh, night mode, it, it goes without the ghosting. The time cost is around uh, 20 seconds. So if you capture and saving only JPEG, the result will be around 40 seconds. And if you uh, 
choose wirelessly, but the raw stacking with the ghosting algorithm in the app, the time cost will be even longer. It be around 40 seconds on my platform. I have a uh, Snapdragon uh, 845. It's a flagship SOC, uh, flagship phone. So the time cost of all a one shot night mode is is quite long, but the result is pretty amazing, right? The overall it is very slow, even on the flagship phone, and not everyone has flagship mobile phone. So for the consumer like you and me. At least you need to spend one minute on a single shot. And anyway, the DNG workflow is a very advanced in app workflow. It's a 14 bit workflow. That's very good. So, something I didn't tell you in the last chapter here, I, I want to mention about some benchmarks, some numbers uh, behind the night mode to make you understand the night mode better than anyone else. And uh, I have some suggestions on night mode because I'm not, although I'm pretty satisfied with the result till now, but still I think night mode can be better and could be way much better in the future, I think. The first one is uh, the JPEG stacking, in the, in the ISP, the Insta picture. ISP stacking with the ghosting and more EV step. You know, the the JPEG with the 8-bit depths is I have less dynamic range, but they are shooting really fast. If you can apply the deghosting also on the JPEG, and with uh, one more EV step to capture the same dynamic range as the DNG, so that will help the people get a better picture with less time. And a better benchmark and a better performance, you know, for the consumer like me, uh, for me, it will take at least one minute uh, to generate a good a good quality picture from the app so the benchmark is sometimes is quite long and the performance is still can be better and the better algorithm for a better benchmark and higher bit depths so I, I don't know what the the algor algorithm the, the developers use because it is a 14 bit in a 14 bit out workflow why not uh, give a higher bit depth? Because if you stack 8 or 9 14-bit DNG file, we can definitely go to the 16-bit or even higher. And if you can go to the 16-bit or even higher bit depth, I think the image will have more potentials on the PC or desktop workflow. And I, I still believe that the 16-bit depth, color depth, will be uh, also boost the quality on the mobile platform. And the robustness doesn't matter because in my situation, uh, when I was shooting uh, in a very dark situation, uh, for example, the shutter speed will go to the a quarter second or one fifth second. And it's most probably the camera will, will just stop working. I don't know what happened. But uh, when I checked the SD card, the, everything was saved in the card. But the, just the camera stopped working. And I have to uh, tear down the battery and uh, reboot the camera to make it work again. So the robustness does have to improve a lot in the future for the night mode to perform better in the future. So the robustness doesn't matter. So that is the suggestions on the night mode. And next section, uh, some features requests on night mode. And the first one is the uh, when I was operate the camera uh, in the photo mode, the night mode was you can see in it was the last last one in the scrolling menu. Uh, but the, the menu cannot cycle in scroll so I have to scroll five times until I go and get the night mode. But if you have a cycling scroll on the menu you can just scroll once from top to bottom and from the first shoot to night mode directly. So if you have cycling scroll on the menu, uh, the user experience on your screen will be more friendly. And, it, and uh, because I, I'm very satisfied with the night mode picture quality, uh, I, I wonder if we can make always on option on the uh, on the camera. Every time the camera opens, it will go to the night mode directly 
automatically, no matter what settings you choose last time. And it's now uh, every time the camera opens up, uh, it will go to the last settings uh, in my operations, such as the video, time lapse. What if we can lock the startup mode as an always on option for night mode? Because night mode is also working in daylight. And, and you, as we can see, there is limited options uh, in night mode because we cannot choose ISO, uh, we cannot choose the shutter speed. It's happened fully automatically. Uh, for higher quality, for the more flexibility, I, I also want ISO priority and shutter priority. In the case, that can create uh, better pictures with this tiny camera. So ISO priority and shutter priority are the next two features I want in the night mode. Okay, so these are the four features I want to add in the future about the night mode. And also uh, some suggestions on the workflow. The workflow it, till now is very simple and uh, cost effective, but uh, still it can be better. For example, uh, on the app, if we were shooting quite a lot of night mode, we have to uh, synthesizing them one by one manually. But what if we can have a batch synthesizing in the one R app? And the batch synthesizing could happen in backstage. So once we are not using the uh, in the app, the app will automatically synthesizing all the uh, night shot for us. So next time we open the app, and everything is ready and it's it's done. So to take the advantage of every time, every second in the consumer's life. And uh, on the studio, as we can see, we have limited control abilities. We don't have the leveling correction. We don't have the stitching calibrations and uh, everything we cannot control. It's just not like normal in studio. When you were shooting with a single ISP, we can calibrate everything and we can fine tune the horizontal line and everything we want. But for the night mode, is so limited. So I want more control abilities like the normal ISP in the studio. And wh what if everything can could happen straight out from a camera? So once we open the app, the night mode just like a, a single shot. I, I don't know the hardware, if the hardware is powerful enough to do everything inside the camera, not everything in your app. So that will be a, another uh, selling point of the 1R for the camera. For everything inside, computationally inside your camera. That is definitely the future of the night mode. So why not straight out from the camera? Okay. Uh, last but not least, uh, the essence of the night mode. So I want to think deeper about this mode. And uh, the night mode is very common also in some other cameras. So the last section was uh, thinking about a uh, deep thinking about the essence of the night mode. Yes, it's some uh, something uh, quantum physics, quantum physics about the photons, the wave and the particle dualities. Uh, you don't have to know uh, this uh, quantum uh, quantum physics concept. Uh, you only know that is uh, when I was talking about a camera that could capture more photons. I really mean that it because the more photons we capture on a, a single pixel in a CMOS sensor, we can have a higher short noise signal to noise ratio because the short noise SNR is equals to the square root of the photon numbers. So the more photons we have per pixel, the higher signal to noise ratios we have. The signal to noise ratio is kind of like the imaging quality. Yes. So for a given size of the sensor, a small sensor like the 1R, we have uh, 2.3, or 1, 1 slash 2.3 inch. Uh, for the compact and slim cameras, for a small sensor like this, the only way we can capture more photons is to capture it with multi-frame. And the short noise can equals, can uh, grow the, once we can capture more photons in a single pixel. And the photons, we have some other the Poisson distribution statistics. You don't have to know the concept. 
But if you are not, uh, very uh, interested in the topic, you can go to the source. You can learn a lot in this link. And capture more photons with multi-frame is almost the only way we could do with small sensor. And uh, you know, we on the small sensor, the pixel size, or we call the pitch, the pixel size is really small, so the pixel could easily get the oversaturation. So not only we are going to capture more photons, we have to make sure that the pixel doesn't get overexposure to oversaturation. So that is why uh, the 1R was uh, implement, implement the night mode with a 8 plus 1 technology to capture more photons with 8 shot DNG while avoid the pixel oversaturation with the last one with the minus 4 EV capture. So that is the reason, that is the difference uh, in the 1R's night mode. To capture more photons, for example like this, it's the burst 9, burst 9 RAW plus JPEG. For the 8 shot, it captures more photons, right? And for the, the last shot was to capture the, bring back the highlight to avoid the picture, the oversaturations. And with the step of EV minus 4. So to capture more photons or at the same time avoid the oversaturations is exactly the essence of the night mode in the Insta 361R. So it's a very clever solution for the high quality one shot photo. And uh, for one shot 360 photos, that is a very interesting technology and a very interesting feature inside this camera. So in this presentation, uh, I have shown you the study uh, on the consumer's perspective on the one hour's night mode. And this is uh, my YouTube channel, and I have put my video on my YouTube channel. If you like it, you can go to my channel to watch more of my videos. It's a great pleasure to have you in my video. If you like my channel, please subscribe and hit the notification bell. And we will see each other next time in my new video. See you next time. Bye.